Welcome back to the Public Square 2.0. I'm Drew Bogner, president of Malloy College, and I'm here with Ray Polaro, who just gave an absolutely exciting talk about how you can decide from an economic point of view how to get the best job you want, heart, mind, and wallet being the three factors. So when you're talking about that, Ray, I, I was really struck by um, the position of, of our ability to be able to do that, to actually have those other factors besides compensation um, on the table for consideration of jobs, the heart and the mind. Because I think historically, I'm not, not sure that's always been the case, and clearly when I look in other countries and for a large segment of the world, that's not often the case. So, you know, how, you see that as something that's changed and are more people actually looking at those options, but how, do we, how are we in a society at this point where we can actually do your calculation? And do your calculus. I'm not so sure that it's changed very much over time. Um, and I think about uh, my own historical reference that I used in the presentation, where I compared my just graduating from college self to, my, to myself today. Um, and I, I think there's probably two, two things that come to mind. And for young people that are just starting out, they should be ready for a lot of sacrifice and really hard work at the start of their careers to enable them to have choices later on. Yeah. So in other words, you don't always have those choices. At the beginning, you might not always have those choices, but maybe you can put yourself in a position where you will. I think it's really rare that you have those types of choices at the very beginning of your career. Now, there, that doesn't mean that there aren't folks that will sacrifice any kind of monetary reward and do things um, for principle or for uh, the opportunity to grow intellectually. The Peace Corps comes to mind. Teach for America is an example that we see that's increasingly popular among the very top schools in the country today. And that doesn't pay any money. So there is that element that we'll choose, make that choice, but it's a luxury. Yeah. Not all of us have that luxury. So sacrifice is the first thing. You have to be prepared to work incredibly hard to pave the way to have those choices later in life. And you have to remember that it's really a long-term proposition. This is not something that evolves overnight. Right. It takes a career. And I think that's important uh, to make that point. Um, but can you, let's say you're a young person trying to decide what career you want to go into. And in a way, sometimes that career choice is the same calculation on the wallet or other things you might see as rewarding. And some people make the decision that way, right? That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you put yourself in a position as you're making those decisions on career or as you're leaving, getting ready to set yourself up for a career, how can you put yourself in a position so those factors can all be considered? I think two things. I think the first is you really have to think long term. You have to think about what it is in the job that you have today that will help you grow into that place that you want to be in the future. So that, that's a really important thing and it involves, it involves some long-term thinking. The second thing is you do have to be grounded in your own principles. You have to have some feeling for what's important to you and you have to make that a priority. And it may come down to taking a job for a little bit less money in order to be true to those principles that you have as an individual. Yeah, and I, I, I can really understand what you're saying, Ray. I, for, I've often had, I've had this series of... Uh, luncheons where I bring in successful alumni and meet with the students who are majoring in that same area. And there's one constant uh, factor that, of success, regardless of who the alum is and regardless of the career or the field. And that's that that particular alum always said yes to any opportunity. So to your point, they didn't think at the beginning, well, this is, I'm only working 40 hours because I need to have time to go out with my friends and to be able to go and uh, you know, um, take a vacation when I want to take a vacation, but they were thinking, I have to set my career up, say yes to all of the, um, all of the opportunities that my career gives me, saying yes to whatever my boss asked me to do, postpone some of those other things, and then later on, they were in a position to do that. Yeah, those are, are choices that um, are surprisingly challenging. Um, a lot of our students today um, are, work very hard in college. But it's surprising when they leave the halls of the academic institution how hard they have to work and the sacrifices they have to make and the extent to which they have to go to take those opportunities. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, I, as you were talking about that, I was 
looking at it from an employer perspective. You know, I'm president of the college, so we have a lot of people who work for us. And so one of the things I think about is the, the way in which we structure our workplace environment to both attract the kind of people we want and then to keep those people. So, and I know I've talked to some of my friends who uh, run various companies, and they're telling me that the young people they're hiring today, the millennial generation, has a different calculation on the heart, mind, wallet. So for them, they're looking for environments that are self-affirming, um, and those factors become really important, and if those factors are not there, they still feel a sense of loss, and as if they shouldn't be, a, that's not the place they want to work. So things like, um, do you celebrate my birthday? You know, uh, things like that. So for them, that heart component is really important, and they're looking for a place where they can feel fulfilled. You know, one of the things that comes to mind when, when you mention that is, is Jack Welch at General Electric. One of, one of Jack Welch's management techniques was to handwrite a note to his employees to thank them for a valuable contribution. That self-affirmation, that was a really powerful management technique. It was authentic, it was real, but it meant that people were happy where they worked and that they were willing to go that extra mile to be successful. So I, I think that that's always been something that's really important for good managers. But for young people today, it's incredibly surprising how important it is um, how you can dress at work. Can you wear jeans and flip-flops? And, and, and that's, that's a really important that's factor true. to today's employers. Do you have a casual dress environment? Um, do you have flex time? Are you allowed to work from home using your computer? Those are really important factors to today's young people when they're, con when they're considering where they want to work. Yeah, it, it would be some factors that in the past we might not have considered uh, essentials, but they're on that heart-mind continuum. You want to know that you're doing something worthwhile and that what you're doing is valuable. Yeah, and, and I think some of the factors that would contribute to, say, for example, mind, Training and employee development, opportunities for travel, experiences, those are still just as important today as they've always been. But now we think about how those can take us to this future career, this place where we want to be, where we have these choices. And the training that we get today, the sacrifices we make to take that training today, are something that we think about in terms of the future. And I know as an employer, uh, the whole issues of benefits is changing drastically. So some of those things you might have considered an essential are probably going to be harder to calculate into your, to your, your heart, mind, wallet, for instance, how, what health insurance is going to be provided or whether you're going to have a pension or a 401k. So many of those things are changing within the world of work right now. So I, I'm not sure how uh, those will be considered as you're weighing that out. More compensation, less benefits. Yeah, I, I think in terms of um, a, economists would consider those all uh, quantifiable monetary rewards. So to the extent that you get a paycheck, um, that's dollar value. To the extent that your employer pays for your health insurance, there's a dollar value there. To the extent that your employer is underwriting a pension, there's a dollar value there. Now the model that we explored today, Heart, Mind, and Wallet, did not consider time value. It was a simplistic version of a much more complicated economic choice. But when we consider those things over time and the value of each of those economic components, the only thing that's changing now is it's just harder to calculate. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and there's so much we can talk about here. And maybe I want to give you a chance for the last word. So one last piece of advice to those individuals that are already in a career or thinking about a new career. How do they set it up so that they can attend to all three components? I think, I think the most important thing is to try to understand who you, who you are as an individual and what's important to you. I call those principles. And the other thing is remember that for some of us, especially as we're advanced in our careers and we're approaching retirement, not working is a choice. So when we want to make that decision as someone that's approaching retirement, we want to think about the value that we're getting by employing our, our, our hours of the day towards a work and figure out whether or not not working and the things, the rewards that we would achieve from being at home, from practicing our golf game, from pursuing <laughs> intellectual pursuits. Or volunteerism. <laughs> or volunteering. Which I hear um, a lot and those might end up being more valuable to us at some point in our career um, and get us to that place where we want to retire. Well, Ray, I appreciate you giving us this new framework to look at the world of work and helping us to look at those factors of heart, mind, and wallet. I think it's very helpful as you're, if you're in the middle of your career or if you're starting out in your career. So I want to thank you, Ray, for uh, joining us today. 
Uh, that's all the time we have. I want to thank everyone else for joining us as well. And we look forward to seeing you at future editions of Malloy, the Public Square 2.0.